Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Uh, first of all, apologies for not being around. I'll tell you this, it wasn't my choice. The top chess engine championship of season 25 is in its Premier League stage and I hope to be able to cover some material later on. And for today, have a small deviation if you like. It's not about the Premier League. I want to look at Velvet, an engine rated at 3337. It hasn't done all that well in League 2 because it ended at position number 9 out of 12 engines. And as a result, um, lost 13 inner points. Having said this though, Velvet is one extremely aggressive engine. Let's look at one of her Games against Alta. I have no idea of the exact day this game was played. And this is the reason why I'm going to leave a gap when it comes to the very date the game was played. Okay, with this in mind, let's see why Velvet deserves attention. Before I move on, please pay attention to the ELOs of each engine which pretty much gives you an all-round picture as to what to expect. And in the meantime, do you think you can beat an engine, especially an engine like Alta, because if you can, then by definition, <laughs> you're able to beat the strongest human player on the planet. Only an engine can beat an engine, and it is for this reason we're going to analyse this game. Okay, let's shoot. Velvet this side, kick things off with 1d4, Alta answers with a straight d5, and now via this move, this is what we saw here. And from this point on, this is where we get to see pure aggressiveness. Some people will not like the next move, but others will not do without it. It's this bishop exit or entry if you like, into this outpost. And what this move does, you know, automatically brings into play the Harwich. And let me tell you this, this is MC's own signature move. I personally don't like this because I prefer bishops on c4. Having said this, bishops either on f4 or c4 are extremely aggressive responses. Let's wait and see what's around the corner. I'll immediately launch this response. E3 appears and with takes and takes, I'll press this move. Any ideas what A6 does? Some people want to look and gain control of certain key squares, and right now, this pawn C7 is supposed to be weak. It is not. Let me explain why. If we try this move instead, if you jump the knight into this outpost with the idea of gaining access into c7 with a lightly check, not only knight a6 stops everything, but with this position you see here, there is a far stronger move in the making. Can you spot it? It's this check. This timely bishop check messes everything up. King e2, bishop d2, and knight c3 are one of three options available here. If you try king e2 to keep the momentum going, knight a6 is good enough to stop everything, but also what appears stronger is to just castle. Once you now slot the knight into c7 to pick up the rook. There'll be some nasty repercussions coming. Using the position of the king on e2 would allow the knight to chase after the bishop. And even if the bishop backs off, the poor knight on c7 would drop like a fly. If you alternatively take the rook, not only the bishop falls, but this check is going to 
cause further damage. King e3, e5, and white digs herself a deeper hole. Okay, let's come back to where we were. After a6 to stop the knight's axis into b5, which we now confirmed is not going to be the best move around. Velvet pushed on in this way. This response allowed the queen tight knight to find his way into the game. And with Velvet doing the same thing with her king side knight, Alter, what did the engine do? Once again, goes it passively. This is a move it introduced. A stronger move to go for would have been simple b6 to just be able to break up these two guys on c5 and d4 respectively. b4 would be an option here with a trick to mind. If this guy does come off, this incoming check is all you need and the damage has been done. I never expect though in the meantime an engine of this calibre to do anything like this. So let's come back to see what happens after this passive move to h6 took place. Velvet got a bishop out with the idea to get king to safety. That passive move to h6 had in fact a meaning and this is why it was played. Alter used the pawn to chase after the bishop. Velvet backs him off to safety and though knight h5 could have been ideal. Alter rightly so. Bypasses that move to this move instead. With Velvet castling, Alter 2 gets aggressive. He hunted after the knight, and this is a point of no return. From this move on, his engine territory and where no humans usually go. Any idea where this knight went? Anyone? If you moved the knight anywhere, just put him back and try something else. Don't get me wrong, knight h4 looks absolutely fine. Bishop h4 is also okay, but it allows for plenty of counterplay. Velvet saw far more than any human can see. And in this light, this is a move she went for. It's a smashing initiative. We're going to see why in just a sec. Depending on the strength of each individual engine playing, engines can be fooled. Not just this, but I mentioned in other videos, engines do blunder as well, more often than you can ever imagine. Alter is no different. We can add another blunder to the list. Every time you hear this, this is what a blunder is all about. With Alter choosing to get rid of the knights, the pearly gates were swinging wide open. With the rook on e1 and the king parked on the same file, Velvet got rid of this guy. E5 was a necessary must. And with Velvet finally getting rid of this guy, there is your compensation with plenty of interest too. It's a knight for two pawns, in a very sketchy position for Alter. As soon as the engine got the bishop to hit the diagonal, the queen removed this guy too. And from this point on, everything begins to slot in. Alt in turn, minimize the deficit by getting hold of this guy and check out what is to follow. Before we show, can you guess an intriguing move? Let me tell you this guys, for starters, there is this incredible knight check to force material off or force the king to be displaced. If you go king f8, not rook a d1, which is also very playable, but bishop c2. Can you see the depth of this bishop retreat? It's still allowed for this queen move into a3. 
Knight e6 to stop. Queen a3 is most likely going to result to the queen to come under fire. Whatever you do, you will be playing catch up. Even with best play. So queen e7, bishop b1, and queen b4. The queen will have a problem. Knight d5 might drop this guy. And but after the queen invasion into h5, bishop d7, the straight f4 is going to cause the big bang. Coming back, there was no check from f6, but something as interesting. Any ideas, anyone? That would amazingly cut through via this response. A move actually, which leaves no room for any maneuvering. This guy immediately came off. What we have here, it's the same story as we started. It was all about this spawn c7, which Velvet was not going to miss. We had squeezing in a check. His Majesty was forced east, and what develops next can actually only be seen in engine games. We humans will be tempted to get rid of the rock, but let me tell you this. If you do get rid of the rock, it'd be equal to this. If you too get rid of the knights, it will be one blunder after the other. This incoming check will be enough to settle the score, and that will be it. If we come back to this move here, rather than take the knight, if you take the bishop, this too is one very deep position, is it not? Should the queens come off, again, this will be a blunder, but do we know why? It's because Alta would have too many pieces over. 5 plus 3, 6, 9, 12 plus 1, 2, 3, 4 is 23 versus 5, 10, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If the queen removes the bishop, the only way out would be to get rid of this bishop. Problem here is that this position, the rook cannot be eliminated. If you take him with the knight, the queen will fall. So the way to do it would be to take the queen first, and even this position is by no means a straightforward one. Anyone wants to chip in? It's this incredibly dangerous interim check. Knight e7, take with a check, we know king e8 simply does not work. Taking the knight with a check leads to the removal of the rook, but once the queen falls, the score is settled already. However, coming back to this position, king g8 is the only way out. Once you get rid of the queen, this rook vanishes too. What you have here is very close to equality. Chess, guys, is fascinating, is it not? Okay, coming back, let's try and figure out or even understand what happened after this king moved to f8. They either believe it or not, so exactly what needed to be done. She mounted the pressure by this bishop invasion. is looking to find a way to checkmate the opposition. So, what Velvet is doing right now is trying to produce maximum damage. It will take the bishop on e6 with the rook, and when the knight captures, the fork on e6 will be self-explanatory. This all depends on how Alter reacts. The engine sealed the gap to this trick by this bishop move. The other here chases after the big lady. Alta in turn uses the bishop on f6 to attack the queen in this way. But there is so much you can do when up against an engine that outranks you by a huge margin. First of all, the rook was sacked. And the reason for this sack becomes apparent now. The queen coming under fire again. Alta reciprocates the attack on the rook. And a mating one 
is now lagging in the background, is it not? As soon as Velvet sorted out things by attacking the Queen for the third consecutive time, and at the same time safeguarding the Rook, Alta was trying to calculate her best move. Queen d8, for example, leads to disaster. Take, take, and take. And after Queen d7, do you see this poor Kingside Rook? He goes two, and one piece vanishes after the other. And that Queen on d8 will not be able to last very long when she's all alone. Would she? Coming back, it's particularly interesting to see how engines deal with problems that they face. Alter chose best to sack the queen for the rook. Alter jacks the king to the seventh. And you know, even here things are not as easy as they look. Rather than grab the rook, whoever chose to retain the bishop, the knight here does come under fire. But Velvet is not amused. My apologies. Though the knight was attacked, Alter does not attack him with the A rook, but with this one. And once again, against all odds, the rook is not eliminated, but first the engine squeezes in this check. Nope, I've done it again. We saw another very interesting response. Velvet challenged the bishop in this way. Both bishops came off, and only when his majesty dropped back, Velvet still does not get rid of the rook, but instead grabs hold of this knight. Another huge blunder was about to unfold here. Alta got rid of this guy. H4 appears, and now via this rook move, the queen comes in with this very move. It's a perfect response, but can we see why? King g7 resulted to this check. There goes the king back to where he stood earlier. And now via this move, this is why bishop takes a2 was a blunder. Rook a8 to try and force the exchange was rejected to this knight initiative. And what a move this was. The bishop eventually dropped but Velvet already worked out a forced mate. The engine squeezed in this check. His Majesty walks west, and now by this check, the king is finally ejected to the seventh. When this brand new check appeared, the king found this outpost on h7, and, and though this follow-up check secures the rook, Velvet said no. Melva said no to this because she found a faster way to victory. She came in with this smashing move. What this move actually allows was to give Alter the chance to check the king. But as soon as the king found the only square he could go to, it had to be game over. Rook h1 check, only buying a few seconds, resulted to the rook's removal. And now via this attack, Velvet jumps in with this nasty check. King h8 and queen takes was the last move sealing the game. With a beautiful checkmate, and why not? Let's hear it for the first and last time today. Ah, checkmate. What we saw today was a game of only 40 moves long. And in games hardly any 40 moves, unless there is a big discrepancy in the reloads. This was the case today, but putting things in perspective or relative terms, Velvet 2 made her matches when she competed in League 2 recently. What we get to see, however, is that engines generally are getting way more sophisticated than ever before. And with technology moving forward, these engines are distancing themselves and can put to shame our best human chess players. In the meantime, I hope you enjoy this game in particular and would like to see you again shortly because I have something else lined up. Your chess puzzler here and you know the drill. Safety always first.